Hello everyone, welcome to the tutorial guide that will be split into several videos showing you tips, tricks, and overall help you improve at the new DST event, The Forge. One of the things you should know is that there are four roles in The Forge, the DPS, the tank, the healer, and the runner. Please note that most of these roles can be interchangeable with other characters. Today we will be taking a look at the healer role. The healer role is mostly taken by the characters Wilson and Wickerbottom, with Winona being a wild card. Wilson is considered a healer because of his increased revive speed and the ability to give people more of their maximum health back after a revive. Wickerbottom is also considered a healer due to the fact that her ability lets her next spellcast become enhanced, thus making it really good for healing. Winona is considered a wild card due to the fact that she gets a 10% faster cooldown rate, and her large health pool and ability to use most of the weapons in the forge allow her to also take on the different roles, hence the term wild card. These characters are interchangeable and are not a must, though I highly recommend having a Wilson on the team as the increased revive stats are really helpful. Now onto what you should do in the forge as the healer. In the first couple of stages, the item that heals you, called the Living Staff, isn't available. During that time, you should be focusing with your team on enemies so that your team members can take as little damage as possible. When the staff finally drops, it is your job as the healer to, well, heal your team. Now who gets the Living Staff if you have both Wilson and Worker Bottom on your team will be discussed later. There are no real things you have to watch out for or real responsibilities that you need to do other than dodge enemies, stick with your team, and heal. This role is very different from the runner role, as the runner role has to keep track of enemies and what wave you're on. Since there is no real routine check that you have to follow in the forge, I will instead be talking about healing placements, who you should heal, and when is it okay to swap between the healing staff and the other books. The first thing I'm going to cover is healing placements and who you should heal. Now what do I mean by that? Well, the Living Staff's special ability is to cast a circle of plants that will heal up you and your team standing in it. An important fact that some people might not know is that the Living Staff's healing circle can also put enemies to sleep, so keep that in mind. Since the staff is a ranged item, you are able to place the healing circle a bit of a ways away from you. Why would you do that, you might ask? Well, one of the other key roles in the forge is the tanks, which are the people you should prioritize healing for. Their job is to take the damage for you and gain most of the aggro on them, so that the DPS and healers are kept safe as they shoot from afar. Good and bad healing placements can determine whether your team lives or not. Since the tanks are going to be taking the fight head on, as they can only melee, it is your job to keep them alive. Placements are key to having a healthy team and even tone down the intensity of the fight. Where exactly do you put the healing circle then? Well, you should always be placing the healing circle directly on top of the tanks, no matter what. Aside from a few exceptions, which I will talk about, you should always place the healing circle on them, as this will allow your tanks to continue fighting, and any other enemies not getting attacked will be put to sleep if caught in the circle. Tanks tend to be slow and bulky and for the most part caught up in the front lines, so placing the healing circle on top of them gives your tanks more survivability and overall will make it so that your tanks will appreciate you more. Placing the healing circle away from your tanks and the fight is a selfish thing to do, especially if it's centered on you, as 9 times out of 10, your tanks are caught up in a fight and are going to have a hard time leaving it to go heal. Placing the healing circle on them not only increases their chances of living, but allows for the waves to go by faster. If you place the circle half a mile away, it's only going to slow down the progress of the game as now your tanks have to stop fighting and run all the way over to where you placed it instead of them being able to continue swinging. Because you are a healer, you have access to ranged attacks, so there should be no reason that you should be taking as much damage as the tanks will be. The few exceptions of not placing heals on top of your tanks directly is A. Your team is slowly being wiped and are having trouble reviving, and B. The fight against the champion. If your team is slowly dying off, or there are too many enemies around for your team to start reviving, then you should place a healing circle on top of the fallen teammate. In doing so, will not only give you health, but enemies trying to reach you will be put to sleep, allowing you to have an easy revive. This should only be done if necessary, as if only one person dies, chances are there will still be enough people to take aggro away from that spot so a revive can happen. Or if a Wilson is on the team, that person can easily sneak in a quick revive. I mean, come on, he gets two times the revive speed, he doesn't need that much help. The last exception of not placing heals on the tanks is in the last fight against the champion. In the last fight, you should always be placing the circle directly on top of the champion himself, especially during his last stage as he will actively avoid touching it. Most of the time you can outheal the damage taken from enemies while standing in the circle, but because the champion is a last boss, he is able to outdamage and even kill people inside the circle. Placing the healing circle directly on the champion not only makes him go to sleep, but allows time for your team to heal up. As you can see here, putting the champion to sleep is almost necessary for defeating him, as the sheer amount of damage he does can wipe the team very quickly. Because of how fast the champion can move and his attack patterns, you have to directly center the healing circle on him, as he is fast enough to move out of the way before the cast can even finish. Also, a pro tip, when you see the green circle on the ground, that should be your cue to stop fighting, as that is when the healing cast is almost completed. 
Here's an example of me missing my healing placement on him, thus making it so that he attacked my team from the outside of the ring and him not touching it because he avoids it at this part of the stage. Now, a good tactic that some players use, especially as Wicker Bottom, is to juggle between books and stabs. What I mean by that is that people switch between healing and using other books and stabs to get extra damage and help with mob control. But when is it a good time to do that? It is okay to switch under two conditions, how far the other weapons are from your team, and what the health situation of your team is looking like. You can easily check the entire team's HP at the top left corner of the screen. The location of where the other weapons are and teammates is essential as you don't want to be walking from one side of the map to the other every time you want to switch. Doing that costs time and leaves the rest of your team down one person, specifically a healer down. If you're close and your team's health is looking alright, then it's okay to switch to use that weapon's ability real quick and then switch back. You should always prioritize healing as the living stuff is the only way of restoring HP. One place I would avoid switching at all costs is against the champion in the last stage. He deals too much damage for the Toma Beckoning to be effective as he will kill it in one swing and he will quickly break out of the Petrify book if used on him. It is better to just stick to the healing staff during that fight as your team will need the heals and you should be trying to spam heals as fast as possible. Before I start talking about the armor pieces, I'll answer this very important question. Who gets the healing staff if Wilson and Wickerbottom are both on the same team? The answer is Wickerbottom. I say that because of how Wickerbottom and Wilson work in terms of using weapons. Wilson is able to use darts and staffs to fight with, while Wickerbottom is only able to use books and staffs. Now think about it, Wilson already starts off with a ranged attack which is his darts. But Wickerbottom starts off with a book, which is a melee attack aside from its special ability. Since Wickerbottom is not a tank, she cannot take hits and will be less efficient if Wilson takes the healing staff instead. Leaving Wickerbottom with just her book overall decreases the team's DPS, as Wickerbottom will not be able to attack often without risking her life. Same thing goes for Maxwell. Maxwell's low health pool and ability to use only books and staffs makes it hard for him to be efficient and useful if Wilson takes the healing staff earlier on. The only time it is okay for Wilson to take the healing staff is if A, the Maxwell on your team has gotten a hold of the Inferno staff, B, both Wickerbottom and Maxwell are not on the team, and C, if any of the two people playing those characters say otherwise. It is also very important to pay attention to game awareness. As you can see, there is not a lot of rush to get these people back up on their feet, but that Wolfgang decided to go and res that Maxwell. It is better to just wait a little bit longer for Wilson to res you than having to be res by someone else. Now let's talk about the armor pieces for the healer role. When it comes to the healer role, there is the revive person and the living staff person. The revive person should just wear standard armor that doesn't intrude on the other role's armor pieces, meaning the feathered wreath for the runner and the stone armor for the tanks. Now, the living staff person needs to look out for three things, the silken wooden armor, the crystal tiara, and the wooden garland. The silken wooden armor is the ideal chest piece as it provides decent damage reduction as well as give the wearer an increased cooldown rate allowing for faster healing circles. Now, there are two headgears for the living staff person, but only the first one gets replaced after the second one drops. The first headpiece you will need is the crystal tiara, as again it gives you increased cooldown rate. This is also the headpiece that is worn temporarily, as the next headpiece is more meant for this role. The second headpiece, and the most important one, is called the woven garland. As soon as this drops, the healer needs to grab it, as the garland gives the wearer a 20% boost in healing power, which is really fantastic. The reason you want to swap out the TR for the Garland is because the Garland is useless to everyone else besides the person who wields the Living Staff. The TR is also meant for the DPS, but the healer takes priority because heals are love, heals are life. Again, an important note, don't just grab everything in sight as soon as it drops. This is a team-based event, and you most likely don't need that item. Well, that about sums up the healer role. You can now go into the Forge with the power and knowledge to keep your team fighting, and the ability to efficiently use the healer role to its full potential. Once again, these characters are interchangeable and are not locked to them. They just make the job easier. I will be doing the other roles soon, so be sure to stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck in the Forge.